ಸಚ್ಚಿಪುತ್ರಿಂಗಷ್ಟಾವತೀ ರಾಧಾಕುಂದಂ ಗಿರಿವರ ಮಹೋ ಯುರಾಧಿಕಮಾವಶಂ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೋಯಶ್ರತಿಸ್ಥಗಿರಿಪಾಯೀಗುರು ತಮ್ಮ ಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚಾಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುವ್ಯೈವಚ ಪತೀತಾನುಪವಾನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಿಖಿಲಾಶ್ರತಿಮಾಲೇರತ್ನಮಾಲಿತು ನಿರಾಜಿತ ಪದ ಪಂಕಜಂತ ಆಜೀಮುಕ್ತಕುಲೈರು ಪಶ್ಯಾಮನ ಪರಿತಷ್ಟಂ ಹರಿಣ ಸಂಶಯಾಮಿ ಅನಾರಿತಚರೀಂ ಚಿರಾತ್ಕರುಣಯಾವತೀರ್ಣ ಕಲು ಕ್ಷಮಾರ್ಪಯಿತು ನಟೋಜ್ವಲರಾಸಂಸ್ವಭಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರಿಯಂ ಹಾರೀಪುರತ ಸುಂದರಾದ್ಯುತಿಕದಂಬಸಂದೀಪಿ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಕಂಧರೆ ಸ್ಫುರತೋ ವಾ ಸಚ್ಚಿನಂದನ ಅಜಾನುಲಂಬಿತ ಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವದಾ ಶುಂಕೀರ್ತನೈಕಿಚರೋ ಕಮಲಾಯಚಕ್ಷು ವಿಶ್ವಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜಾಗರೋ ಜುಗಧಾರ್ಮಪಾಲೋ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರಿ ಲಾಲಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಗೌರಂಗಸುರಿದಾ ಭಕ್ತ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಭ್ರಮನಾಯ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪಥೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪೀಕ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರಾಧ್ವಿ ಬೃಂದವನಾಧೀಶಿ ಕಾರುಣಮೃತವಾಹಿನಿ ಕೃಪಯ ನಿಜಪಾದಬ್ಜಾದಶ್ಯಾನ್ಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಯತ ಭಕ್ತಿಪರಾಧಲಕ್ಷಿತಕ್ಷಾಕಮಾರಿತರಂಗಮಾಧ್ಯ ಕೃಪಮಯಿ ಶರಣ ಬೃಂದೇ ಮಸ್ತೆ ಶರಣಾರವಿಂದನ್ ವೃಂದೇ ಮಸ್ತೆ ಶರಣಾರವಿಂದನ್ ಶಿಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ಗದಾಧರ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ದೌಜಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ಮಾಧವ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರಮಾನಂದ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹೋ Pranam Sovakti, welcome. Um, <clears throat> we are somehow officially beginning today with our Japa retreat. <clears throat> Although we have somehow already begun with it some, every single day with some form of introduction to it or beginning to it. Maybe making the point that it never, we can never... and that and maybe you who can never begin it's in like ongoing journey <laughs> somehow <clears throat> so today we are having one introductory meeting that yeah we were thinking about doing that two days ago but for certain dynamics and circumstances it was not possible so there was some an arrangement in its own so we had the blessings of Sri Dauji Balaram mm-hmm. yesterday on his appearance day Baladev Purnima and somehow there was more more the official mm, pushing beginning of our retreat with the blessings of Sri Baladev mm, Guru Tattva personified in him so somehow after that we are beginning today our meeting and we will be having this type of morning meetings for the next week basically today is August 12th so we will be building up if you will with the again foundation and strength of Balaram till 
Shri Krishna Janmashtami and uh, the next day after Srila uh, Prabhupada's appearance day as well. But in between Baladev Purnima and Krishna Janmashtami we'll have basically literally one week of mm, focus on Trinam mm, and trying to go in deep in depth. Mm, that's how it, how it was promoted so we have to honor the promotion Java retreat and in-depth seminar. <laughs> so <coughs> in, in, in relation to how to actualize our connection with Srinam, mm, or how to upgrade our relationship <coughs> with God in the form of, of his divine holy name. Mm. But yeah, to, today again, as I mentioned, we have begun with, with Baladev Prabhu, and uh, we'll be building up till Sri Krishna Janmashtami. And somehow we could see this retreat as a, as a preparation for Sri Krishna Janmashtami. So when we reach that day, hopefully, we have some increased realization or insight about who is having the birthday on that day, if you will, and how the one, the birthday boy, <laughs> is not different from, from, from his name. No? So we are somehow, there is a connection between Krishna's birth and him being born in our heart in the form of Srinam, if you will. <coughs> And then we will interestingly conclude well, with Srila Prabhupada's appearance day by whose grace and, and connection, of course, uh, basically all of us, most of us are here today in a place like this is quite, has been quite instrumental and responsible for all that will take place this week. So that's a way of also celebrating <coughs> Sri Nam coming to our life by the, gener the generosity and empowerment of someone like Srila Prabhupada and his divine uh, agents, representatives, including our Gurudev and so on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, and interestingly, just to make another connection, since finally today is the official beginning of the retreat, and today there's another special day in our Gaudiya calendar, especially for us, as members of the Bhaktivinoda Parivar, and especially even more specifically for those who are coming through, uh, who have been sprinkled by the overflowing of mercy that came from Sila Prabhupada, because today is the day in which Sila Prabhupada uh, boarded Jaladuta to reach us, basically. <laughs> so that's the day, that's today. No? And of course, as we know, he was taking a very small luggage with him, but a very big. Uh, content and very deep container in his heart full of Krishna Prem and, and this powerful Harinam that we will try to to reflect upon this next week. No? So somehow it's a very interesting way how <laughs> it, it's come to, today we are, we are beginning a journey ourselves and this is the day that Prabhupada began his journey towards us. So we are beginning a journey this today, if you will, towards Srinam, towards Prabhupada, towards the giver of Srinam. So somehow we are meeting journeys, meeting points. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because in one sense, I was thinking today in the morning, since Srila Prabhupada's journey in, in the Jala Dutta, somehow it's also our journey, if you will, no? in the sense of our prospect is present in his journey, if you will. No? <laughs> no? He's crossing the, the ocean and reaching literally another planet. It has to do with delivering the goods that Mahaprabhu came to give, Srinam, mainly, as Srila Prabhupada emphasized so much. And somehow, even although he may not have our specific names in mind, he had all of us in mind. No? He had this universal vision. I mean, no, nobody was missing from his <laughs> merciful glance and, and, and mission. So in that sense, we are celebrating today not only his journey, but our journey, our being part of his journey, no? our uh, anadi trajectory being intercepted <laughs> by this very unique uh, mythic moment, mythic journey in which not only again Krishna, uh, Srila Prabhupada is, how do you say, sailing towards the west, but but the big cargo ship of Krishna Prem is being <laughs> delivered and crossing. No? That, that's a very interesting point that also you may know about that regarding the very first 
Western Vaishnav. Of, of course, I would very much like to describe Bhakti Thakur as the first Western convert, but we can forget for a minute that that example. <laughs> and there is another first Western convert, which is called Swami Sri Krishna Prem. I don't know if you have heard about him. He was this famous Richard Richard Nixon, I think, like a pilot in the war, and he has this. Uh, accident and he was falling and he received this revelation that God to have saving have saved you because he was thinking I'm dying and when he woke up in the in the hospital he received this this epiphany like God has saved you and you have to look for him in India like this so he went to India and he started like inquiring where is God no where is, and he of course went to India and he found he thought I will find God quickly and he found Shiva, Ganesh, Brahma, Vishnu, Saraswati, Durga, Lakshmi. He was like an ending pantheon of personalities. So he was like, oh, now I'm more lost than before. <laughs> but he, interestingly, Srila Siddhar Maharaj points, he started to, um, to analyze what each one of these figures were doing. And he realized everyone is doing something. Everyone has some work to do. And she was meditating, Brahma is creating, and so on. And when he reached Krishna, he realized, well, he's doing nothing. No? He's just enjoying life. That must be God. He had this type of insight. He's just playing flute. He's just celebrating life. He's God. No? <laughs> and eventually he was initiated by, by a Vaishnavi called eventually Yashodama no? from the Radharaman tradition. This is in the beginning of previous century, basically. And uh, became known as Sri Krishna Prem first. Then he requested his gurvi, which is the female for guru, can you give me sannyas? And she said, but I don't have sannyas myself. She said, say, okay, so I will accept sannyas myself, and then I can give you sannyas. <laughs> <laughs> so she accepted sannyas, became known as Yashoda Ma, gave sannyas to Krishna Prem, who became Swami Sri Krishna Prem, and they founded a very interesting ashram in, in the Himalayas. Hmm? And, uh, and, and, and Sri, Swami Sri Krishna Prem, it is mentioned, described that he had a very deep affinity for Sakya Bhav, interestingly. And it is a, it's a very famous story that once he was... This to make a context for something, I will say, I'm not getting totally sidetracked. A little bit sidetracked. <coughs> we are just returning. And once he was... This was shared with, by Krishna Chandra Prabhu in Switzerland recently when I was sharing this story that Krishna is tied by his friends. He's crying, but he's not... Krishna not crying because all my friends are so cruel, but... They treat me on, as on an equal level and they love me so much as a friend that oh, I cannot contain myself. So a similar story has to do with Krishna Prem. Once he was sleeping and he heard like some strong winds and some boys say dada, 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 dada means like brother, like Daoji as we say. He wakes up and goes to the altar and sees that one window is open. And he, I mean, you're in the Himalayas, not precisely the Caribbean. So it was cold, so he <laughs> closed the window, and he looked at Gopal, no, Krishna, the deity, and he asked, oh, are you also cold? No, I, 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 have you have a cold? And he was saying that, like, with full feeling, and it is said that at, at that moment, like, Gopal started to cry, no, by seeing how he's treating me in unequal terms. And it is said that Krishna, 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 but he was sleeping, so he was just wearing a gamsha, no? It was not precisely in Paka standard to worship the deity, <laughs> but his standard was another type of Paka. <laughs> so he took the gamsha, he started like to, you know, to clean the tears from Gopal. You know? and, and they say that today they even have that gamsha in the ashram and the gamsha is never getting dry, uh, remains wet. No, so, so that's part of the worship of items in connection to this personality. So the point is that Swami Sri Krishna Prem, he, we are celebrating, remember, today Srila Prabhupada is living from India to the West in Jala Dutta. So basically the same day that this happened, Swami Sri Krishna Prem, a few days before, passed away from this world. Same day and same year. And when he was leaving his body on his deathbed, he said, my ship is sailing. Oh, and his name was Sri Krishna Prem. <laughs> oh. So, if 
you want to call that a coincidence, okay, you choose to do that. No? I prefer to see the mystical side there. No? So the, my ship is sailing. No? The ship of Krishna Prem is sailing. No? Srila Prabhupada is boarding the Jaladutta, coming to our place here and, and, and overflowing the whole world with Sri Krishna Prem. <laughs> mm -hmm. So today is that day, this very auspicious occasion that again marks <laughs> the official beginning of our retreat. <laughs> And there's lots of things to, of dots to connect between one thing and the other. So, Chila Kaupat Ki Jai, Swami Sri Krishna Prem Ki Jai, Sri Haridam Prabhu Ki Jai. So, <clears throat> again, this will be an, an introductory lecture today. Uh, and as I mentioned, we will be having these morning meetings and uh, every day at the same time, trying to address the principle of Trinam from different sites hmm? uh, I have not yet fully like structure plan to what we will speak every day but I will give some place for also here your we'll speak about that later some of your ideas or hopes regarding this experience and we may try to uh, address them and also during the evenings starting from today after uh, Gaur Arti, like at six something or seven we'll be having some small reading every evening we will be reading from Gopal Shampoo which has a, a big a whole chapter about Krishna's birth but it gives a lot of uh, how to say the story behind Krishna's birth you know, before Krishna's birth so it's like a building up to Sri Krishna Janmashtami so we will be sharing every evening a little bit of that also trying to create the proper momentum if you will hmm? And not to lose sight again, this Japa retreat somehow is converging in Sri Krishna's Admastami and in Prabhupada's appearance as it's starting somehow with Srila Prabhupada today and Baladev Prabhu yesterday. Oh, then we will go with Krishna <laughs> and Prabhupada again at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we may again, when we reach Sri Krishna's Admastami, we have some increased upgraded realization. Oh, today the birthday boy is not different from the birthday name. No, on the boy of in the name, no? and there is no difference between Nam and Nami, and so on. So, again, I, I'm open to suggestions, ideas you may like to share, things that you may feel you need to, to increase in your practice, in your conception. Uh, I know that some of you are maybe starting to know about our philosophy or about the principle of the holy name. Some of you I'm meeting you for the first time after a few days, some of you are meeting you for the second time personally, some of you are meeting you for the third time probably, four, fifth, sixth, seventh time, <laughs> whatever the case. So my point is that, of course, I'm giving the same lecture for everyone, and sometimes some of the topics may be, as my Guru Maharaj likes to say, too high for low, for some, sorry, <laughs> and too low for others. Uh, so bear with me and be patient and, and, and as, as we always say do not do not expect to to catch everything and to understand everything because that that will never happen you know, it does not even happen to me who I'm the one supposedly telling you the things but myself I'm saying things that I, I'm not so sure if I understand what I'm saying you know? so <laughs> I remain open to deeper understanding of whatever may come so that's it Let's remain open to that, and this, whatever comes, as my Guru Maharaj likes to say, even if one single point hits your heart in, in one lecture, the whole meeting was justified. You know? Try to take that point and try to hmm, make that ferment in the transcendental way in, in your heart and, and grow. And so. so today's uh, introduction it's mostly connected with the idea we are having a retreat here no? so that's officially called Japa retreat and then many of you have come from distant lands and even taken took three planes and slept in airports and it's like okay this is almost like I don't want to compare proper Jaladuta journey but that's a <laughs> there is some degree of tapasya and effort and, and, and something that shows your willingness to be here so I my point is I appreciate that and that's something that shows Okay, for some reason you heard the word retreat and it sounds like, hmm, sounds like an interesting experience. Why a retreat? No? So today we will try to share some words about why a retreat, the need for a retreat, no? or for retreats in plural, no? the, 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 the need, the importance of, 
of the experience we call retreat. Mm -hmm. and, and, and experiences that will come through that. Mm -hmm. So interestingly in our tradition, uh, when, when we speak about how to, to ascertain truth, how to understand reality, sometimes three methods are mentioned, as you may know, which are called Shabda, Anuman, and Pratyaksha. Mm -hmm. So Pratyaksha means like direct experience, Anuman means like inference, and Shabda means resorting to revelation, divine sound, and so on. But interestingly, Sanatana Goswami says Pratyaksha is the ultimate Praman, or Pratyaksha is the ultimate uh, way of knowing reality. Pratyaksha means direct experience. So even if you go to reveal knowledge that we emphasize this is the most important thing, I mean, you have to get some direct experience yourself, because if not, that still remains yeah. theory, a book. Now, I can have with you the most sacred book and revelation of history, but if you are not able to <laughs> integrate that in your own life and, and, and reach a particular personal experience, in one sense, that means nothing or too little, or it can make things worse even, because you may s know the book a lot, but have no experience at all. But no, I know the book a lot, and I'm very saintly because I'm for, but which is your experience of the book? Because actually for us, the book is not a book. <laughs> the book is exper an experience, it's a recollection of experiences. For us, the most important books in our tradition are, if you open that, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavad, are the experience of one person after another, their insights, their revelation, their realization. So it wouldn't make sense to to think, okay, that's, those are their experiences, but I don't need to have my experience. It makes no sense. <laughs> so for us, yes, we go to Shabda, we go to reveal knowledge, but all that has to converge in Pratyaksha, which means direct experience. Mm -hmm. So Sanatana Goswami means, says, that's the most important evidence. When you have some direct experience of something, I mean, that becomes something undeniable. Not like always, I remember when someone asked Carl Gustav, Carl Gustav Jung, like, does God exist? No. Uh, oh, no, sorry. The question was, do you believe in God? <laughs> and he said, no. He said, I know that he exists. It's not that I believe or I don't believe. It's just I know he exists. I have experiences. Like if someone asks me, do you believe in Jason's existence? And I'll say, Jason, right? Yeah. So I won't say, I believe that he exists. I know. Mm -hmm. I would say, I know him. I know he exists. I mean, I have personal experience of that. So you follow my point. No? So one thing is belief. And when we speak about faith or shraddha, we are not speaking about belief. It's not just like some mental conviction. Like, I think that person may be over there above the cloud or whatever. But it's, I have personal, such a personal experience that I cannot just deny that. It's too self-confirming, if you will, self-reveal. Mm -hmm. So we want that type of protection. We want that type of personal experience guided by revelation, not just personal experience, because everyone has personal experience of so many things uh, without revelation. <laughs> Pratyaksha is, is there. But we, need, we, we need try to, con to connect the two. And when we have a proper personal experience guided by perfect knowledge, uh, the experience that we will have will confirm, if you will, will be totally confirming that the goal of our practice is indeed sublime. That's what we call faith. Now, faith means that type of conviction that on a daily basis is reminding us. And this is sublime. No? The practice is sublime, the goal is sublime, and you have some experience to <laughs> to carry on, if you will, with that. It's not just like, oh, you tell me sublime, but nothing is going on. I never experienced. No, no. We we need to <clears throat> to have experience. So faith again is this undeniable, basically experience that will make us develop a natural conviction about anything, about whatever you have faith in. Again, you cannot deny that at some point. And as we said the other day, interestingly, the word anubhav, and all this in the context of why we need a retreat, <laughs> the, the word anubhav in Sanskrit means, do you remember? You say that in the first lecture. Anubhav. 
how translated into English as X not X something but experience <laughs> so experience in Sanskrit we say Anubhav and Anubhav means also Anubhav Bhav means once the mood or emotion and Anu means to follow so one way of having experience is although we have our own experience the experience we want to have spiritually speaking has a lot to do also with getting closer to someone else's experience also no? to, to follow the experience of someone else sometimes we speak of the guru or of the enlightened more advanced practitioners and the mere proximity of someone who is more advanced or who wants to be advanced I mean it doesn't need also to be only more advanced if there is someone sincerely practicing <laughs> just being close to that and what to speak of following the experience of someone how it becomes our own experience hmm? follow my point if you have if you are close to someone who has love for God you may get closer to that person of course not only physically for taking a selfie but <laughs> internally you get try to approach that person and even though you may not be in the same situation that the person is to be closer to his or her experience it's an experience in itself for us and just to be closer to with someone very advanced we may not be there but oh, that's an experience so that we call also anubhav you know, getting closer to those who have the thing we would like to have who are closer to the reality we would like to be closer and becoming their becoming inspired by their example hmm? we do our own homework if you will with our own selves hmm? so but that has a lot to do with this idea of the retreat because realization when we speak about having a realization having spiritual insights also that will come by by practice no? it's just not something that you press a magical button and you have one vision after another no, there is there is a practice that is recommended not in a mechanical way but in a sensitive way and certain practice will turn, take us to a certain result and ideally ideally those practices should be engaged in in a concentrated way mm. on some level or another because you can imagine it's not that uh, perform your meditation totally distracted and diluted and it will give you the highest goal probably not no. so, so ideally a practice should be done in a concentrated way hopefully without break on some level again over a sustainable period of time it's not just I expect in five minutes to see everything and feel everything but to develop some sustainable permanent continued uninterrupted practice and ideally in the company of like-minded people hmm? Rupa Goswami calls it Swajatiya Sadhu Sangha we should have sadhu sangha with people who has a similar goal than us, similar affinity, similar nature. Mm -hmm. And again, all the things that will give us realization, that will give us experience, that will nourish our faith, all the things, constant practice, concentrated, focused practice, hopefully uninterrupted in proper environment, that's what we are coming, hopefully, to look in a retreat like this here, in a place like this here. Um, there is, there is, I mean, when, when you organize yourself and determine yourself to try to focus at least for a period of days in a deep way, in a particular direction, in a certain environment, that gives a result, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I've had the, the fortune of being in some recent retreats also before coming here. I've been in, I mean, in different places. We did some retreats in Finland. We did some small retreats for a few days. Uh, in a retired in an, in an ar archipelago, archipelago, how do you say in English? Archipelago. Archipelago. No? Mariko Patrabu has one place there, Sri Chaitanya Dham. So we retired there for a few days and focused on certain topics. Then we went to uh, Poland and we have another retreat with our Guru Maharaj and like 70 devotees, also in the countryside, very beautiful, for a whole week. And then, as if, if that was not enough, another retreat. <laughs> In Switzerland, in the Swiss Alps, in Ananda Dam, also like for 10 days, and with certain focus on certain topics and with certain number of people focused in the same way. So that creates a certain cohesiveness and certain like condensed focus, collective condensed focus that gives an individual experience. Hmm? 
So hopefully we can uh, get closer to that somehow and have some important experiences throughout these days in this same connection. So it's important that we are aware that we, we came to a retreat you know, and the implications of a retreat. It's not just an doing tourism and having, coming to visit this cool place and that's all, but it's a retreat is, is an important point that invites us also to retreat, to retire from certain dynamics and things that may be part of our daily life. And we want to, to see ourselves from other perspectives, like my guru Mahesh likes to describe the word detachment. Now, detachment doesn't mean that you reject anything, but detachment means that you take some distance from certain things. So you can appreciate them in, in, in their proper light. You know? Like for example, sometimes it's, you know, if I put my hand here, it's too close to my eye. I cannot see it. It's so close that I cannot have an idea what's, what's this. So I need to be detached from my hand, to take a distance. And then I can appreciate what's in my hand. And I cannot take more distance than this. My arm is this long. So it's enough. No, it's a proper distance. I know what's... <laughs> so that's detachment. I'm not rejecting my hand, but I'm not too attached, too close, that I lose sight of objectively what's going on. So certain distance from certain things, so I can really understand what's the world, where are the dynamics of my daily life, who I am, <laughs> who I want to be, all that I can be, and so on. So retreat, again, it's not escape from reality, it's not repression, it's not denial of the world, nothing like that. We are not coming here to, to all together can speak about how horrible and demonic is everything outside of Madhuvan. That's not the <laughs> idea of a retreat. By doing that, you are more there than anywhere else. No? So we are coming here so we can whatever we have to return or for those Madhavan buses, <laughs> we can continue our daily life in a retreat spirit. You know? Because in one sense, retreat is not only about the physical movement, but an internal place that we can always find shelter and solace and so on. But sometimes we need a physical movement <laughs> for that to happen in a more sustainable way inside of us. Hmm? So in this way, again, a retreat offers us a very unique opportunity, hmm? uh, some rare few days of immersion hmm? in a particular direction, hmm? in a totally conducive environment. I hope you agree with me. Madhavan Ki Jai. So again, the stage is important for the drama to be performed. <laughs> so to, our drama is Java Retreat, <laughs> and the stage is Madhavan, if you want to put it like that. So. Uh, it's very, very conducive, but of course, again, we shouldn't take that for granted and, and, and think, ah, I don't have to do anything myself. No? Many things are in place nicely, perfectly, but we have to put our 50% in the equation always. No, 50% is coming, or more probably from outside, <laughs> but also we have to invest our part in the equation. And if we do that and everything else is in place, it will work. Let's see at the end. Now let's speak in a week. <laughs> no, but if everything is in place, some epiphany will come, some result will be. Mm. Mm. And of course, there is some experience, that, conf that experience will be confirming for us so we can carry after the retreat, if you will, uh, and give us further hope to move forward in our own life, in our own practice, in our own chanting in this particular case after leaving the retreat we'll speak about that at the end of the retreat no like what to do now after the retreat because that's also a typical situation it has been so nice but tomorrow i have to take my plane and go back to this and that so how do i not lose this week and how, how do i carry on and and integrate the experience in my daily dynamics and so on and so on mm -hmm. So somehow how to yeah how to take how to enter into retreat spirit <laughs> uh, whatever I may be hmm? how to I may have these moments every single day of my life also something I will say very important regarding having retreats is uh, we mentioned that briefly but that will give the participants that be that is all of us uh, a, a feeling of of community hmm? which is very important at least for us is very important there's a very important side of 
the individual, as I mentioned, 50 percent, but there's another 50 percent, which is the collective influence. So the, the, at least the bhakti path, the path of devotion that we are trying to tread is both individual and group, 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 and collective. So, so a retreat gives us the feeling of community, basically. Community means common unity. That's the very word community coming from. We have, we have a common center, a common ideal, a common goal. All those, we are so different, so such a diverse backgrounds and, and, and so on, but there is something in common that is deeper and stronger than all our differences put together. So we are coming here trying to, to focus on that. And then our differences will be ornamenting. No? It will be like bush and like decorations on the foundation of common unity. Mm -hmm. So this feeling of community means like, okay, we all belong to something bigger than us, mm -hmm. to put it in simple contemporary terms. No? We, our source is something which is way beyond ourselves. So we don't need to be too much concerned about ourselves and ourselves and ourselves as the all in all, but there is a higher <laughs> belonging to something which is way bigger than all of us together. But all of us belong to that same, mm -hmm. to that same source. So that it allows us to embrace a common interest mm -hmm. over a selfish one, over on, on my I, me, mine conception of life, and that's the whole priority. So again, sometimes we may be trapped in those dynamics. I am in mind, I am in mind, aham mameti. <laughs> so a retreat offers us the opportunity to mm, come to the community experience and try to get together for a common goal, common center, common interest, and understand how actually that's way more uh, relishable, if you will, and rewarding than trying to conduct yourself as a separate alienated unit of reality. <laughs> that's work. You are not alienated from everyone else. Mm. So that's the very idea of Sangha. No? Sangha, in one sense, Sangha without age means association, the company, and Sangha with age, like Sri Chaitanya Sangha, means community no? or common unity. Mm. So that's why we, we are together, all of us here. So And we need each other in, in this experience, just for you to know. No? It's not that it's only me, again, sitting here with this fancy table here. <laughs> and you need me or anything like that. No, no, I, I need all of you and we need each other. That's the really uh, healthy codependence, if you will, <laughs> in, in, in Sadhu Sangha. No? Like, like Srila Siddha Maharaj once very interestingly defined Sadhu Sangha when he was asked about that, and you may know. What Sadhu Sangha? And he invoked Napoleon. <laughs> he then went to the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, give the official Shastric definition of what's association with saintly people, but he said, Napoleon, Napoleon, chair? That's it, Napoleon chair, Sadhu Sangha. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> everyone was from the West, but no, none of them knew. For example, Srila Siddhartha was quoting from the West. <laughs> and he quoted this famous example of Napoleon being with all his soldiers one night, and they had to spend the night on the outside, and it was raining and there was snow it was so cold so they didn't have a place to sleep so they could die basically in the whole in the night it was so cold so he put them in a circle i, I always thought we have to try that someday <laughs> <laughs> okay we will try we will try and we'll take a maybe a picture yeah. for, <laughs> that will be the logo of the retreat <laughs> At first we will try and see how it works because it, we put one of these below just in case it may be like. <laughs> so he put all his soldiers like in a circle and he said to one like, okay, sit like if you were a, a chair. No? No? Like Lisa is now sitting like this, but without the chair. He said, put like this without the chair and sit on, on the back one. And the person behind you will also do the same and be your chair. And the person behind you will be your chair, but you will be the chair of the one in front of you. So everyone will be the chair of someone else and we'll, we'll have someone else as their chair. You follow my point? So everyone did like this. I don't know if all at the same time so nobody <laughs> fell. <laughs> but somehow it worked. That's the point, no? So Sri Rasa said, that's Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> no, we need support of each other. It's not just one is the chair and everyone is sitting on top of that person, poor person, <laughs> or vice versa, no? 
so it's it's 50 50 if you want to put it somehow like that mm -hmm. so trying to to cooperate with each other that's at the very beginning of love no? sometimes we speak about love and it sounds like it's such a noble ideal and it is but what's love not to, if we enter into a more um, pragmatic practical thing love begins with cooperation if we don't know how to cooperate with each other then you can put the word love in in some case for a while no? because concentrate on cooperation first <laughs> and community community cooperation all these core words which has to play with one another <laughs> no? so that's the meaning of sankirtan as i like to say sometimes no? sankirtan means i cannot engage in sankirtan without all of you sankirtan means group project congregational chanting i cannot do sankirtan by myself i can do kirtan by myself I can do some kirtan, <laughs> some kirtan, <laughs> but some kirtan, I need all of you. No? So that's a very interesting idea. Our main practice, by its, in its very definition, is saying you are going to do it all alone by yourself. <laughs> you need proper environment. No? And everyone, again, pointing to the same, investing themselves in the same direction. So it's, there is no conflict. Like our Guru Mahesh likes to give the example of the lake. Hmm? And they throw in the how do you say pebbles. Mm -hmm. So you are in a lake and you throw a pebble, and that starts to create some circle, concentric circles. But if someone else comes and is not so accurate, <laughs> misses the same target, and throws the pebble somewhere else, those concentric circles will attack the other concentric circles. There will be a conflict, and beauty will be spoiled, if you will. But my guru likes to say, but if somehow you have trained enough you are like an arjuna or something very mm -hmm. accurate archer <laughs> and you can always throw the pebble in the exact same place all of you can invest yourself each of you are a pebble if you will investing yourself in the same point pointed to the same target that will create a further expansion of concentric circles which will result in harmony not in conflict without pebbles without circles there is peace like no? like the, the lake will be peaceful with many pebbles in different directions there will be agitation and conflict but with pebbles falling all on the same place as the Magumras likes to say there will be a movement which is harmonic so it's not against the peace of the lake but it's adding to the peace no? peace and love as Magumras likes to make the mudra <laughs> so love has to do begins with cooperation again and cooperation means let's find a common center and invest our time and energy there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are trying to do here, just for you to know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> again, co collective sacrifice for a common center. The point is, if we do some collective effort with a common certain in mind, that will produce something that cannot be produced otherwise, no matter how, how much you try by your own self. It's not possible. <laughs> And again, that's Sankirtan. Sankirtan means collective sacrifice for a common... Sankirtan is sacrifice, yajna, for a common center. The result, the, pro the product of that is impossible to get without that community experience. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and of course, this is very different from just a mere social gathering. Uh, because many people in one same room doesn't mean community. Uh, doesn't mean retreat, what to speak. <laughs> Even sometimes so-called spiritual uh, gatherings, if you will, sometimes become just crowds of people, but not communities of like-minded ones. No? So that there's a difference. No? When you have a gathering of people with separate interests, sometimes instead of feeling I can open myself fully and be nourished by each one, unfortunately you maybe feel forced to remain guarded. Because you perceive there, there is separate interest here. Each, each one or some of them are coming with their own agenda in hand. <laughs> so you're, you, you have this survival instinct of defensive mechanism. So anyone is opening to anyone. So that, that, that's technically not community. Mm -hmm. Although you share a similar faith officially. <laughs> Sometimes that can happen. Mm -hmm. So joining a retreat has to do trying to hopefully, hopefully, mm -hmm. in an inspiring way, mm -hmm be a life-changing experience in that sense that is fostering oh we can really be a community we can really 
participate each other in each other's life with a common ideal in mind, and a real sense of spiritual community, not just a group of people who officially are card carrying members of the same school of thought. Okay, that's something nice, and <laughs> we can show the, our cards, our credentials, you know, but <coughs> we have to, to foster a real sense of spiritual community. Like, it will be there in eternity, basically. You know, our ideal, at least, in our particular school of thought is we will be living eternity, eternally in community. You know, it's not that we will have our own cave and we don't need to see anyone else. And I mean, by Kuntha is maybe something like that in the sense that you can attain Salokya Mukti, you can achieve the planet of God, but you are living in the same planet. It doesn't mean that you are even serving Him or seeing Him on a daily basis. It's just you are on the same planet in which God lives, which some, for some people is cool enough. No, it's cool. I'm on the planet of God. It's okay. I don't need to be there next, serving, assist. It's there. But our goal is not that one. <laughs> it's that we want to, to, to remain in community you know, eternally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so ex an, an experience like, like a retreat will give us, if we if properly engaged in, if we engage, if we do our part properly and experience of a retreat will give us a glimpse of our lives in eternity, basically. How, what will, will be our eternal dynamics in the spiritual world, in community? Yeah. And, and, and if we have that experience and we get properly inspired by that experience, of course, we will think, okay, I want now to start to align to that ideal. So. I will enter there as soon as possible, if you want to put it like that. No, it's not that you will enter, how to say, the spiritual community if you are not working here on your spiritual community experience. No, the, the better you do that, your homework, when you do it perfectly, you are there. <laughs> That's the idea. It's not that still I'm working on that till 20%, but Krishna mercifully will take me and throw me to Golok community forever. He won't be that cool because he, he knows if I do that, you will go crazy. <laughs> now first, you have to be there. Anticipate that here. You know, be fine-tuned with that reality. So again, a retreat like this is offering us that opportunity to have a glimpse of our eternal schedule, life dynamics. And also, of course, as you may imagine, a retreat offers, like, uh, how to say offers the possibility to break the momentum of materialistic life dynamics in case some of those things are still accompanying us. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have the opportunity to break that particular cycle and, and again, to retire from, from those dynamics and oh, we'll have another experience and realize oh, how, how, more, how much more happy I am uh, without many of the things that in the materialistic dynamic I consider uh, how do you say? Uh, impressing? No. How do you say impressing deeply in English? Uh, you cannot live without that. Necessity. Yeah, but I have. I need. Uh, if you feel I how uh, adjective? What's adjective for something which you um, cannot live without it? Unnecessary. Um, More extreme than that. Um, Air is. I don't know, that word exists in English? Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, that's okay, the word. okay, that's the word. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. saying indis uh, indispensable. Thank you so much, Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. So in our daily basis, so many things we think, oh, this is indispensable, this is indispensable, this, I cannot live with. But when we go to a retreat, somehow we take some distance from some of those things, and we realize, oh, that was not so indispensable. Oh, that was not so indis And we realize, oh, this is indispensable. <laughs> this is actually the priority. And what I thought it was a priority... It's not at least top one priority or top five. But Krishna consciousness is top priority. <laughs> and sometimes we may lose sight of that and think, no, oh, so many priorities. But at the end of the day, at the end of the life, <laughs> real priorities, our connection with our source. So anyhow, that's, that's some words regarding the importance of, of a retreat. And I'd like to share with you some little objectives that I c that came to my mind at least for me regarding going through a retreat but also I will ask you and invite you to to share yours so we make it together again this is a community <laughs> experiment <laughs> mm -hmm. 
of course, I already mentioned some things in that connection. Of course, one immediate uh, objective that at least I think is natural to, to have in mind is of a, a Japa retreat. One objective is, okay, let's share our common interest in, in chanting, no? in, in Japa, in meditating on the holy names of God, or to share our lack of interest, but our desire to increase our interest. <laughs> which is a way of expressing our interest. Mm -hmm. And of course, sharing that with other souls we have this common interest. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a very important point when we establish relationships based on common interest. Because if you don't have any common interest, basically you, you don't have a relationship with the other person. <laughs> and our common interest is based on our common source. You know? So that allows us to have a relationship with everyone, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, also one objective an interesting experience is to have concentrated, intensive spiritual uh, experience where we dedicate, choose, determine, okay, I'll spend this next week trying to have the Holy Name occupying a certain cer central role in my life. Hopefully every single day, but at least let's do it in a more focused way with all the activities of my day somehow revolve around this mm, particular expression of the Divine, the Holy Name. Of course, sometimes we may focus on some other things as the center. All of them are connected, like when my Guru Maharaj in Poland explained who is the most important member of the Panchatattva. Mm. And everyone, before seeing the lecture, was, what he say? <laughs> no, I mean, watch the lecture. <laughs> it's just one hour. It's not just like, what did he say? Who is the most important? <laughs> and of course, his conclusion was, all of them are the more important. <laughs> If you analyze one and the other from different perspectives, all of these members are the most important. And similar, we can do some other day a retreat on Srimad Bhagavatam, some other day a retreat on Sadhu Sangha, some other day a retreat. And all of them are like center of our lives, if you will. No? So today, Srinam has the turn for that. No? And of course, it's always the center. All of them are always the center. Mm -hmm. But to sometimes focus on something, some aspect of this absolute reality and, okay, for a week, let's put this in the center more than often, and let's see what comes out of that. Mm. And again, by doing so, one objective of the retreat is that we will have some experience, some taste for the experience, for Srinam, in such a way that when we return home, mm. uh, or we continue home here, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the high taste of the, of, 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 of the retreat may help us to naturally, organically, transcend other lower tastes. That's how it works, like Krishna says in the Gita, Param Drishna Nivartan Te. When you have a higher taste, that's the only way you can naturally, as a byproduct, not be interested in a, in a, low, in a lower taste. Mm -hmm. But we need the high taste. We cannot just force ourselves into transcending stuff, or we don't have anything else to go for after transcending this stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, some other hopefully objective and experience in their retreat may be like to, to have this uh, insight of the ongoing necessity of developing our chanting. Not in a neurotic way, <laughs> in, a, in a ongoing, like this is an ongoing project because as we will see, developing our chanting means developing our relationship with Krishna, with God. I mean, they are synonymous. It's important that we get accustomed to think in these terms. You know, my chanting is my relationship with God, because as we will see, he's not different from that name. So my addressing the name is my addressing the person. My addressing a person is in the context of developing a relationship, and not just any relationship, but the highest, most important one, with the person who is the supreme person. Therefore, the project is ongoing. There is never an end. It's not like, okay, I'm done with the holy name. I'm done with my relationship with Krishna. I've reached the highest possible peak. It uh, doesn't happen like that. We are dealing with the infinite here. Mm -hmm. So in a sustainable way, healthy way, to have this epiphany. Okay, we have a taste. We have a, 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 an experience of Trinam in this retreat. And that will give us the, oh, this is, not, this is an ending. There is no end to this. Well, we could have enter into a retreat for eternity. And that's the idea. No? That's why you have a Golok Vrindavan and Golok Navadip. <laughs> <laughs> and also, again, to develop some, to have epiphany, to have experiences, 
deep experiences that may accompany us, join us in our journey uh, forever. You know, some experiences, what does it mean to live under the shelter of the holy name? What does it mean? What, what's the real meaning of living a life sheltered in divine sound? So we are trying to get some clue of this uh, being here. You know? Because we want to live under that shelter forever. Again, it's not just what does it mean to live under the shelter of the name today, this week, but with the prospect of eternal you know, shelter. So what does it mean? Hopefully something comes as a reply to that these days. You know? So some ideas, some objectives that at least personally I would like to uh, increase and receive in myself and hopefully in, in yourself as well. Because again, it's not that Oh no, but you are more advanced, so you don't need to say those things. Again, this is an ongoing project. It's never the more advanced you may be, and I'm not advanced, but even if you will be, <laughs> the more advanced you will be, the more you will realize so much more is there to to honor, to serve, to take shelter of and so on. But that's only my list. That's totally insignificant. I'm interested in hearing yours. No? No? Which are your we spoke a little bit on the on the track for coming here some days ago, but I will ask all of you, the ones who were there, to repeat their insights. Maybe do you have some upgraded insights of that? Also, which are your? I used the wrong word that day. <laughs> well, I asked Sumati and Bhakti Rasa, which are your expectations for the retreat? Well, and the two of them, along with Gorsun, are almost like burn me to ashes with <laughs> like X laser ray beams, like Marash. This is not the correct word. Expectation means you're expecting something. You're somehow attached to a certain result and something to happen in a very whimsical way. I mean, they didn't say all that to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just their glance. <laughs> Loving glance, affectionate glance. You know, close friends, so they can do mm -hmm. that. They need. They have to do that. I need that. <laughs> So we replace expectation with hopes. No? So w what are you hoping for in this experience? And of course, open to whatever Krishna may like to reveal beyond our own list. So I'd like to hear from you. I mean, you are not forced to say anything, but if you would like, I mean, you are here for some reason. So <laughs> if you would like to, to share something that comes to your mind and heart, uh, and I will take note of that with your permission, <laughs> because I would like to consider that during these days and, and try to address their things and include somehow in, in our talks these days so uh, at least some brief mention of something I don't know who, who may like to to begin hmm? why you are here in this retreat which are your hopes in connection to the experience Lisa yes um, well, I've been going six years to be here but I've needed that six years to flow a whole lot of other things. Um, the, the retreat part sounds wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I probably wasn't looking for a vacation. I was looking for an adventure. And because I had some a tragic thing happen right before I came where I had to go be in court for three hours and give testimony. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely stressful. And it threw me off a lot. Um, it rattled me. So I knew what I had to do immediately after that, and I was chanting. It's just because I was raised in a cult. Um, I have to be sure that I don't repeat any cult-like behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this to me is not a cult, even though outsiders would like to call it that. Um, I just, since I was a little girl, I've known that God wanted to use me. And I've had a relationship with God, which is the God, the only God I know, since I was a little girl. Um, wasn't in an environment where I was shown <clears throat> how he could be my friend and I could be his friend. It was always, you know, hellfire and brimstone. So 
sort of, if you do that, God's going to punish mm-hmm. you. Um, so the God of my understanding is a loving God, a kind God, and, and not the kind of God that other people in the past tried to show me. So I love the fact that this is not about religion, it's not about performing. It is performing, but it's devotionally performing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a difference, I believe, because I was always forced to perform, mm. to pret- pretend. Mm. So I could never pretend again in my life. I, I have to be real. And I, since I've met Bhakti Rasa Sumaki, he sure in Asheville or in North Carolina, mm. um, they just are the realest people I've ever met in my life. And I've lived around the world except for Asia. And I met a lot of different people and they really just are very open, honest, and the the agenda is service. Mm-hmm. Krishna service. Okay. Nice conclusion, thank you. Krishna service, everything is <laughs> there. All our hopes are <laughs> there. Thanks so much. Also, that's a way of, of course, introducing each other and getting to know each other a little bit more. There's no end to that as well. So thank you, Lisa, for that. Who else wants to continue? So Mati is ready. <laughs> okay. You can remind us what she said when we were in the car? If, it, if it's okay? Yeah, okay. What was in there? What was the rest of you remember? I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you have vocal cords to say something else now. No, that's not the case with Samad today. Hmm? I mean, I know, I remember you mentioned something, but. Just if you want, if you can. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Well, what? I will try to put those things together somehow. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, be sure. This is kind for Jaka, mm -hmm. this is kind for for Sadhana, and this is kind for a work or for service or for making food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I would like to um, at least have a little bit more of a continuous flow mm -hmm. in my days. And I think So you had um, said one time about how Krishna is already coming to us. He's made the first step for us. And now we are responding. It's not like we're calling Krishna, you know, please come from some far off distance, distant place. He's actually already here. And as soon as we say his holy name, then he's present. So I I would like to have um, get a little perhaps experience <laughs> of, of that to um, become more receptive to Krishna actually already being present mm -hmm. in my life and not him being present in my life but actually experiencing where he is and how he is already already there um, it's just the things that I've put up in my own self that block me from seeing him so if I could e at least see what it is that I'm putting up um, that would be a good start and to remain um open to the reception and to the w welcoming him um, in, in my life. And I think a concentrate, I used the word concentrated, and I found that to be true. It's like, um, you know, if you're taking a medicine and you get a concentrated dose, it 
really has a a big effect that um, prolongs the treatment. If instead of just a little bit, if you have a big concentrated thing, then I, I find that to be helpful to um, have that as my objective. Why Akshay is here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like I feel like there's maybe differing things, but yeah. um, one thing is, I guess, just add what you know that we were talking about. There's so many different w uh, approaches to the whole moon and all that, and I've tried to implement different things that I've learned, and it, for a period, I feel it it worked like. I feel like I'm making some sort of progress. And then later it's like, oh, I take it for granted. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I just, I just start to slip back, and it's like a constant back and forth. But I, I don't know. I really would like it if I can somehow get to that point where it's more constant, forward than, forward than, <laughs> forward than back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that. I guess that's one part of it. The other part mm -hmm. is um, to try to understand, you know, my relationship with. Krishna Jeevani. Thanks for coming for that. It's a very heroic project. <laughs> it's a big responsibility for us as a group also. We have to get helping each other in our own journey. And I'm sure, of course, we are not entering into the details of one's life from pre last year and periods, but I'm sure somehow or other all of us have our, as Akshana City will put the beauty and messiness of the Sadaka's journey. So <laughs> there is beauty and there is messiness, <laughs> but that's beautiful as well because that's in the context of being devotees. So we have so many chances to take advantage of that. So we'll try our best. So, who else? Where is Sundari?
somehow otherwise in the evening the holy name is not present mm -hmm. there almost mm -hmm. and we can see it very much but I would like to learn like how to focus more and I told Guru Maharaj also uh, how it's difficult uh, for me to uh, see uh, Nama as a person mm -hmm. uh, he told me to chant in front of the deity yeah, I'm not sure mm. <laughs> I'm focused in that <laughs> so that I hope to improve with my focus okay. thanks so much what about Jason? Welcome. Mm. So, um, <coughs> forgive my ignorance. Forgive my ignorance. <laughs> humble and humility. <laughs> um, I know that um, I've been searching for my village and my, my new tribe um, an environment that um, will support my values and so well in the beginning um, I didn't think there was any yoga ashram here in Costa Rica so how I found out about this place was on my bike ride. I was just Googling it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I've been, I was sharing my story earlier about I was trying to call this place and send email and, and I kept calling, calling, calling. So fast forward, you know, it just um, that just happened very recently for me, so I was I was very excited, you know. I I, I got a response that someone is here, you know. This place exists, so I didn't know about this place until I arrived, and and um, yeah, I'm I'm so uh, grateful and thankful that I made it here. You know, so far it's been very positive. I, I'm still transitioning, just acclimating to well everything here. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, on, on many levels, yes, I, I know what I want, but then at the same time, I really don't know mm. until you brought me here. But mm. I, I do know. I, I like to. I wish to. Uh, my intention has been to cultivate my embodied spirit mm -hmm. and um, I don't have much expectation great <laughs> <laughs> you got it so <laughs> come to the right <laughs> so it, this is where I am at the moment okay and um, my deepest gratitude <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, I appreciate the point. No, no expectation. That's what I am now. We will speak a lot about that. And also, the importance of like being in the present, no, and, and not just like getting our minds throwing us into a an ending possible just in the future or trying to modify the past or anything. We're trying to remain in the present, especially even when chanting and so on. So. And let's see whatever unfolds from that. Open books and let's see how the book is filled from above. <laughs> Gorsunder is the missing one, right? Yeah. Yeah, everyone else spoke. Yeah, Gorsunder, a few words. I guess um, I would like to hopefully inject a little bit, well, rehydrate <laughs> my practice a little bit. Mm -hmm. Living in the ashram has benefits but I think it also has a lot of um, downsides in the sense that things become very habitual. Mm. Like everything, my whole sadhana is, um, I would say I'm quite like, regulated, but it's like mechanical. Mm. Like, you know, just because I've been doing this 
same thing for so long and so frequently that it, you know it's hard like to keep seeing it like this like if you keep seeing it like even though you're doing it you're doing awesome you're actually doing the cooking it, whatever but it becomes mechanical i've asked lumash about it before he said oh you're not reading enough but <laughs> you know if you because if you understood if you read more and you understood what you do it you wouldn't feel like that but then even reading sometimes feels like mechanical. mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> so, but with a you know an, a group of devotees, mm. I think mm. is a you know a, you can kind of inject some some moisture back into the mm. my dry mm. barren heart <laughs> <laughs> like that. And also, I've been thinking about in, with chanting a little bit between like um, I go you know back and forth between the ideas of. Um, really just hearing the name like mm. in, a, in a no expectations no techniques no nothing mm. like vipassana you know instead of but instead of your breath and just hearing the name like mm. sometimes Lumash has emphasized mm. that it's like between that and then also the kind of like between that and then the affectionately you know the affection for by ca calling out a name mm. but kind of the you know the yogic side of, of fo focusing the mind and then the heart side of, of that your mind if you actually have affection your mind is you don't mm. have to be a yogic right mm. so it's kind of back back and forth between that like i read some some from some christians um who practice chanting a lot where they you know um because sometimes you hear you say well set a certain amount of time aside and you know, just that's what you do and then sometimes you see devotees walking around chanting, driving their cars, doing, you know, and it's kind of like, but these people were saying, you know, we have no real capacity to control our mind. All we have is our time. Mm. So, you know, you may not be chanting good, but you give your time. That's all we really have. Nobody, nobody's that. I mean, maybe some yogis or something are good at controlling their minds, but most people are not. Mm. It's just like this constant struggle. Mm. But you have a certain amount of breaths, you know, mm. in your life. Mm however many you do so you can you can chant all the time even if so it's kind of like there's a back and forth between these two points of view on the name mm. but mostly it's just you know i don't care <laughs> <laughs> well thanks so much i appreciate yeah we'll try to speak about that because again as you were mentioning we hear about many ways of doing and techniques and recommendations and sometimes we we still get the minimalistic most minimalistic approach possible to the uh, hyper embellished <laughs> arrangements for that to happen and um, also of course the point will be that there's not I, I won't i'm not about to reveal you with the actual real correct perfect only unique way that you can chant the name and all the other ones are are to be totally rejected. And I hope you you already have that in present in your mind. <laughs> I don't have the expectation. Okay, now Maharaj would tell us which is the actual correct way of doing that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> because I mean, I won't do that. <laughs> I like grace, not black and white. So mm -hmm. we will see how. There are different ways to do that, and it will work differently for different people, or it will work different from the same person in different times. So uh, we will have to do our part as well at, about being sensitive enough about what's working for us in that part. Because it's a re as we will see, and I don't want to start to speak about that today, but uh, again, it's a relationship. So if you're in a relationship with someone, some moments heart will take precedence and some moments we have to think a little bit more and different functions and different stages and moments and it's good to remain like receptive to what's the need of the relationship at this present moment if you will <laughs> from both parts so i will try to explain about that but again thank you so much to all of you for your contribution and hopes and realizations it also helped me to I mean, I was somehow thinking about addressing most of the things you have shared, but it's always, there's always something new and coming, and, and I'll try to to do that. And, and as Gorsundar Prabhu mentioned, uh, which I I agree with him. No, one may get 
not only him, but everyone can, can take for granted Krishna Bhakti and get accustomed and start to doing things like in a more, like, we know what to do at which time, everything, but it can become somehow mechanical. And, and sometimes to, to retire ourselves from that particular dynamics can enter into a similar dynamics, but different at the same time, like mm -hmm. in a retreat with a group and a particular focus, that can like, as Srila Sermas will say, change your angle of vision. Mm -hmm. and that can help us to, oh, oh like rediscover our own uh, heritage or mm -hmm. legacy or whatever we are doing. So, so again, in order to facilitate uh, the best possible experience for all of us, also I was thinking, of course, not only being in Madhavan, being here, meeting every day for, for, for class, but also maybe some, and trying to adjust ourselves internally as much as possible, but also some external adjustments may be helpful. Again, being here is an, an external adjustment for most of us, so that's in itself a big adjustment <laughs> which helps to have a particular focus, but I don't know, if you have some other things in mind that you feel it may help, you are of course invited to add. Just for example, in my personal case, I, I won't be checking social media f before doing the whole retreat. And with this, I'm not creating any subliminal pressure that I hope you do the same. <laughs> 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 I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, saying for me, that helps me to, to focus more. No? Because I, I won't give a whole lecture about social media. I already did that recently with Namrasa in one podcast we have about how social media can actually distract our mind a lot. We have been speaking a lot about focus and attention and something like social media has a lot of nice things but also can distract, to say the least. So maybe I'm not saying everyone should totally stop using that, but maybe we could think, okay, we are in a retreat for a week, I'll try to limit that, to use that a little bit less than what I'm used to do it or just not begin my day using that as may, I may be accustomed, hopefully not, but just in case. <laughs> And I may start trying to chant or whatever. No? Some adjustments that you feel them, again, sustainable. No? Sustainable, healthy, not neurosis and like, oh, this is too much. And you are more disturbed than, than focused. <laughs> so adjustments. And not only, of course, I'm just mentioning social media as an example. But whatever you consider may be good in your particular situation as an, as an example. To try to increase... Um, focus in the present moment uh, you name it according to your particular hmm, DNA and timeline <laughs> I mentioned someone mentioned this example which is quite universal nowadays I would say no? but uh, I, I won't be streaming the lectures also that I generally stream every lecture I give but I thought uh, Maybe in this case, I'll, I'm recording them and I will share them after the retreat, but I think to keep some kind of intimacy, uh, it's, it's only us, if you will, no? not because we won't, don't want to share it with the world, but we'll do it after the retreat. <laughs> so that also helps to create more cohesiveness in, in the group and, and we are here and this is the ones participating and if someone else would like to hear, you can come to the retreat in my room next time also. <laughs> And also something that we thought it may be a, a nice adjustment and, and of course Sundar gave the blessing, blessings to do that. So we will be having some periods of silence in the day. Hopefully, if not, if that's sustainable for you. Again, if that's extreme and your mother is calling you with an emergency, I mean, of course, <laughs> or you have to have some work meeting or something. But if not, ideally from Mongol Arctic till the till breakfast is not that a big period and it's mostly the period of the day that we are dedicated to chanting japa so from six in the morning till eight thirty ideally we'll have like silence of course we will have kirtan it's not silence kirtan <laughs> in the morning mongol arti we'll have our morning program but after the morning program till uh, breakfast we are you are invited for be part of that, of course, if some practical situation is required, common sense is there. But I think that's also a, a good way of, during that period, also trying to create some time, some focus. Um, and probably also we were thinking, speaking of silence and, and, and some things. Of course, if someone would like to try to increase their chanting during these days, that's also a nice 
way, but also not in the way of getting a higher number also, no? because that can also become like everything that is healthy can become neurotic as well. No? So it's like, okay, I have to chant more, I have to chant more, I have to chant more. And you are just counting and not chanting. But if, if it flows in a natural way and you, you receive proper inspiration and understanding for that, that's also a nice moment. Okay, we all spend this week. And sometimes as Bhakti Rasa was telling me, no? sometimes getting beyond the, f the fixed daily number some, somehow releases us from, okay, I'm, I'm beyond the legal daily number. And now I, I chant from another place, if you will. No? It flows from another place. So for some, again, for some it may work in that one way, for some it may work for another. It's, there won't be any fixed. Okay, all of us will be chanting this fixed amount. Nothing like that, but just try to deal with your own practice in, in a way that you feel it's healthy and also you can go deeper. And also we were entertaining the possibility probably and I'm telling now you in advance so you can somehow mm -hmm. prepare if that requires any preparation. But since we will be building up and attaining some momentum and ideally reaching the converging point of Janmastami, maybe the last day of the retreat before the last day, the, la the day before Janmastami, we were thinking maybe having a whole day of Mauna Brat, of silence. And for those who will like invited, we can try to chant one lakh, which is 64 rounds. Again, not imposing any number, but it's a personal invitation uh, or whatever it may, but, but ideally we will try to have this whole day of silence. It also it's an interesting experience. Of course, we will say Karikata is higher than silence as much as you can speak Harikata the whole day, but <laughs> sometimes it's good to... Silence is about hearing other things. No? There's no absolute silence. No? Silence helps us to hear those things that sometimes are hidden in noise, if you will. No? So we may try to, to do that during the day before the Mastami. That will be next Thursday, I think. So we will try to have a whole day of silence again. If there's some urgency or situation each one can attend that privately, but in, in, in a group dynamics, we will be more in that dynamics. Also, I may like to, after every class, with your permission or without it, <laughs> I will hopefully generously invite you to do some homework. Again, not anything overwhelming, but every class we may have some little, something like you, you may write in your own notebook some little words of reflection. It's nothing that has to be certain pages long or that you have to share publicly with anyone but like a diary if you will diary is it like journalize journal mm -hmm. to do some journalize journalizing you say <laughs> the retreat <laughs> like for oneself again it's not supposed meant to be necessarily shared publicly nor in a certain length but something that may take us to this spirit of contemplation introspection self-reflection uh, so, of course, we shared some words today already, but if you would like today's homework, maybe you can write something about what it means for you to be part of a retreat. No. In whatever direction that may be, that will be more for... for I mean, when, when, you, when we write things, we are forced to think. No. <laughs> no. You cannot just sit and write without thinking. So that's a way of, of increasing our thoughts and contemplation on the situation. So today's homework, today's journal will be one page or whatever it takes. If you want to write a whole book about that, no problem. If you don't come for the next days, we will know you are writing your book <laughs> on that. <laughs> that will be a nice fruit of the retreat. But about, again, today's homework will be what it means for you to be part of a retreat. Mm -hmm. So we'll conclude here our first meeting, introductory meeting. I don't know if there are any questions or something you may like to share before finishing comments questions Maria, so there's one thing i wanted to say about mono um yeah because i've participated in some and there's like this awkward feeling in the beginning because you don't say good morning to each other and you don't kind of even like acknowledge each other sort of so it's like we have to give each other permission to it's okay with me if you don't say good morning you know? i still love you <laughs> i know that you still love me i still love you so because there's like it there's like a because it's just so natural you know mm. the eye contact thing and mm. you know you say a lot that way so i don't know how 
you want a personal representative. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've been now, I've been recently in Swi Switzerland, as I told you, mm -hmm. and there, there they do a lot of silence. Sometimes they do silence retreat for a week or something like this. And that's intense, they told me. <laughs> but generally they have also a period of during every day in the morning when they do Mauna Brata from Mongol Arctic till they take breakfast like at 10. So from morning to 10, they... But again, it's not like some... Everyone's <laughs> like this and oh, someone is coming, so... <laughs> no, like, oh... Uh, <laughs> This is my Mauna Brata, no? <laughs> or I locked in my room till all that period so I don't have to. No, that's that's not the idea. <laughs> and and I and I understand that if some one of us never never do that, it may sound like. So now, how does it does it work? How what I'm supposed to do? To can I look? Should I don't? And we could say there are different like standards of that. I've heard in some places they even the, the Mauna extends to the point of ideally not even yeah, mm. having these gestures and I can't because it's a way of. And it's not about being antisocial and mm -hmm. not communicating, but just like focus, some particular yeah. focus in poor moment in one particular direction. Uh, ideally, that day of Mauna Brata, hopefully there's no social media either, because somehow we could say, I, I'm not speaking with anyone, but you're like... <laughs> 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 so um, so I, I will personally, again, invite all of you to do it as, as sustainable as it results, at least to do that on a... On, on a word level <laughs> uh, of course it doesn't mean that we'll be the whole morning like looking at each other and, and making mudras and trying to <laughs> speak the whole morning <laughs> uh, because I mean the idea is we will be more focused mm -hmm. in a particular and, and, and the point is although we are not as Bhakti Rasa say we are not personally exchanging we know where each other is at that moment on that day we are together in something very important even though externally seems but they are not looking and speaking at each other, but they are looking and speaking mm -hmm. at each other in another way. <laughs> so try not to, yeah, not to get like caught in the external dynamics of that. And, and, and of course, again, do not force yourself in a way that feels neurotic. And there is a place, as Bhaktura said, in the beginning, maybe like, oops, what to do here? <laughs> but eventually it starts to take its own flow and dynamics. And, and there, is a, there is a taste in that, you know, mm -hmm. so... And it's nice to open ourselves through to those experiences, no? like with social media. And I'm stopping using that in the first two days or something. It's like you are because you're accustomed to do that. So the cold turkey is coming or something. <laughs> <laughs> but after a few days, it's like, ooh. And then the tapas is, oh, I have to return to that. <laughs> no? And how to return to that with, the, oh my God, I did that in Kartik. I like to do that the whole month. So then it's like, okay, now I have to return to this stuff. Know what to do. No. <laughs> so my point is, do not get carried by just the initial. Try to understand what's taking place when you are not accustomed to do something and there's some immediate reaction, but that's not the all in all. And open yourself for these types of experiences. If someone is freaking out, let us know and we will, we will do something. No problem. If you need to scream for a few minutes, some catharsis. <laughs> I mean, there's a big place here in Madhava. The point is, if you scream anywhere, everyone will hear because the, the sound will travel very easily. So, And there we will see, oh, those are not the monkeys. <laughs> That's someone hitting to dub tail or something. Okay, no problem. <laughs> monkeys will reply to you and you, you won't be alone. But anyhow, also, again, also a retreat that you meant, what Dr. Rosa mentioned made me think that a retreat can be an intense experience, not only just one day of Mauna or whatever you may do, but the, the week in itself, not in a negative way, but it will be like deep, probably hopefully intense, and some things may be moving, and sometimes we may feel also like the need of sharing that or whatever, or taking some time or distance, whatever the case, the situation, but of course feel free to do that because that's part of the of the team experience, mm -hmm. no, and giving support to each other, and if someone needs time and space or sharing privately, public. I mean, again, this is a, a family journey, if you want to put that. No, it's, that's a community experience. So, so allow yourself to go through those things. That's my point. No, it's not here about as Lisa says. It's not about performing. No, we are not coming here with our best face, 
and trying to remain ideally perfect during the whole week so nobody notices my mess. <laughs> but right from the first day, many of, us, of you were sharing, I'm in a messy state. Well, I need to repair the mess. Oh, great. Welcome. That's it. <laughs> the best way to start. No? Being authentic, no? having integrity and being what we are now and what we would like to be at the end of the retreat hopefully so <laughs> anyhow some thoughts in that connection so so again starting from today just recap recap we'll be having every single day at the same time morning meetings like this here this time uh, where we will be focusing on Omnam Kata from different angles hmm? and uh, in the evenings after Gore Arctic and the evening program we will be having a daily reading every single evening from Gopal Shampoo regarding the pre-birth of Krishna, if you will. So getting closer and closer and converging on, on Janmashtami day. So see you in the evening for that. Sri Harinam Prabhu Ki Jai. Sri Lagurudev Ki Jai. Sri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Sri Sri Dauji Gopal Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Gaur Primananda Hari Hari Go. Vansha Kalpata Rubhishta, Gipasan Rupya Ivacha, Patita Nam Pavane Vya Vaishnavi Jamanam, Pananta Koti Vaishnavi Jamanam, Pananta Koti Vaishnavi Jamanam, Pananta Koti Vaishnavi Jamanam, Pananta Koti Vaishnavi Jamanam, Pananta Koti